Uh, right now, we're joined by columnist and New York Times bestselling author, as well as just great all-around gal, Ann Coulter. Am I allowed to call you a gal? I don't want to trigger or anything. <laughs> I you can call me anything, Larry. Oh, naturally, don't dangle something like that. <laughs> Uh, and I want to talk about your latest column, as always. However, I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, there was a rally today, a political rally in ultra-liberal, ultra-Democrat Montgomery County, Maryland today. And the turnout was stunning. Uh, uh, I'm just absolutely impressive. All the people who came out to protest these policies, they tried to put a, a Casa de Maryland and union-backed uh, counter-protest up, but it was uh, pretty pathetic. And I just wonder what. Wow, I good know. for you. I know. It was amazing. And I, and I got to think that, you know, when, when we talk about the issues on an issue by issue basis, as you lay out in, uh, in, in Adios America, the, the American people agree with this position. It is always a winning position. Yes, always, including for the Democrats. It was Bernie Sanders' position <laughs> four years ago. It was most Democrats' position, Harry Reid. I mean, you do have all these liberal reporters and Democrats saying, warning their candidates, um, ease, ease up on the immigration stuff. It's just they have, as I say in my last book, they have lost their minds. Um, so whatever position Trump takes... Um, it could be, you know, to to get eight hours of sleep a night and <laughs> don't drink too much. No, no, you should become an alcoholic and stay up all night. That That's the modern Democratic Party, which I am apparently completely out of touch with. I watched the first debate, the first Democratic debate, um, not not intentionally, just friends of mine, with, some, with, with a group of Democrats, um, n- normal human beings, but, <laughs> but Democrats, and some of them, you know, quite famous and high up in the in the party. Um, and we all pretty much agreed that the two best were Delaney and Bullock. Um, they polled at about 0.3%. Yeah. Bullock, that's the Oregon guy. Um, and, you know, none of them are my cup of tea, but in, in terms of who made a sensible, rational point, those two clearly, clearly won. They're basically gone now. Um, last night, I thought clearly Klobuchar and a little bit Biden. Okay, fine, he does look a little bit old, but he doesn't want to say anything, and that does tend to make even the best of us tongue-tied <laughs> if you're trying to talk without saying anything, <laughs> which is what you should do if you're in the lead. Um, look at the polls and the, and the New York Times op-ed columnist today, and it's all Warren, Warren, Warren. These, these people would nominate AOC if they could. Yeah. And and I got to ask, because, uh, you know, listen, Republicans have fallen into this trap over the years, too, where we elect the person who we think best, uh, you know, is going to win or or has the is the most electable, I guess, is the word that they always use. And electable is not the same as being the person who can defeat the opponent. Right. Electable is this amorphous thing. But they need to be focusing on who can beat Donald Trump right now. And I don't think that's Elizabeth Warren. No, I tend not to think so either, though I'm not as bullish on Trump's re-election um, as many are. Um, I mean, I'd give it slightly better than odds, but I can, I can, see, I can see an opening yeah. um, for, for a Democrat here. Um, um, I, 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 oh, I was going to say, it's not just this time and how crazy they are, but, but what you just said, I totally agree, it's much more extreme this time. As a general rule, though, um, Republicans' best candidate is going to be the most conservative candidate. Right. The country, but, I and mean, we're, up and we're always overwhelmed tell- with social we- justice warriors, feminists, and immigrants, right. um, which seems to be the total base of the Democratic Party. They really are just saying to, to the average white male out there, Nope, this party is not for you. I mean, one thing, try to imagine the Democrats running um, a ticket with two white men. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely no possible way that, that could happen. Yeah. And, I, I mean, I think they're being fooled by, by Obama. He's a once-in-a-lifetime candidate. I mean, he was extremely, I didn't like his policies. It took away my health care. But he was very appealing. He could tell a joke. He seemed normal. Um, he had a sense of humor. He could sing, looked elegant in a suit. Um, not these myths. Yeah, Kamala Harris, none of those things. Yeah. Oh, no, no. She And she had been my bet for a long time based on the description of the Democratic Party I just gave you. Um, just total pedal to the metal on identity politics. 
But more than usual, she came across as really flip and not caring and na- or flippant um, and, and nasty. I, I, I mean, people were, and I, I think this is often a cheap shot, but um, in, in this case it was kind of accurate. I'm not saying she was drunk, but she kind of came across that way, didn't she? Yes, yeah, she did. There was that one last giggly thing that she did about, about uh, 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 oh, God, I don't even remember what it was, but give hope a chance or something like that, or say, oh, try yes, we can. Instead yeah. of you know, we can't. And then the giggling was just, well, okay, what, what is she on? Yeah, she liked her jokes a lot more than anybody else did. Yeah. Referring in some derisive way to Trump as, you know, that dude. Yeah. You're running for president. Yeah. <laughs> Obama would not have talked that way. Um, Klobuchar, I thought, and, and Biden did the best. But like I say, you look at the polls from the base. I mean, I, I don't know who they're polling. Um, it may be that the Democrats do have enough millennials, feminists, academics, um, immigrants, social justice warriors that, that they don't need to care about um, getting the votes of any white men except the ones that, you know, barely qualify and they're henpecked by their feminist wives. <laughs> Talking to Ed Coulter, columnist and New York Times bestselling author, real fast on this line. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love it when you just throw that in at the end there. Uh, your headline is provocative as always. Mass incarceration saved black America. But th- this is this this big, big push now. The Democrats are trying to, you know, uh, decry the mass incarceration of the 90s that we keep hearing about. But you, as usual, have done some research on the topic. Yes, I've been warning about this forever. Um, as soon as Democrats got control, as soon as the rest of us, oh, okay, finally, a government policy that works, that's made life possible in America again. Um, Republican policies from Reagan and Bush judges to the magnificent Mayor Giuliani of New York um, have just, it's the only go- time I can remember government ever doing what, A, what it's supposed to do, and B, making our lives enormously better by making our streets safe. Thank you. Making life possible again. Um, I've been warning forever. As soon as we're not paying attention, everybody else, oh, okay, everything's, I'm, I'm going to bed now. They <laughs> would run to the thermostat <laughs> and change it on us. Wait, didn't we all agree? Right. Um, and so, yeah, that's, they, that's what they're doing on crime right now, this mass incarceration, um, that, that phrase of theirs, as if there are thousands of, of innocent little lambs being in prison. No, they can never seem to produce one. I keep looking up the cases they, they present to us as um, the innocent little lamb in prison. And without too much research, you find out that, oh, my gosh, I want this guy behind bars. Um, so so what, what are they saying with this mass incarceration obsession of theirs, that we shouldn't lock up people who have committed crimes? I mean, most of the people in state prisons are there for violent crime, not drug crimes to begin with. To the extent um, any sort of drug crime is even listed as the crime on record, well, you have to keep in mind that 90 percent, more than 90 percent, I believe, of both um, state and federal prisons are there because of a plea bargain. So, um, you know, you, you could murder somebody, but no, none of the witnesses will testify, and the cops say, okay, but we caught you with... with with all this pot on right, you, so we'll plead to that. Yeah, so, thanks. for one thing, we want to know what the real crime was. Most most people in prison, it's it's by the time they get there, it's like their third or fourth felony. Um, this it would just it would be a total disaster. It's it's you know Jared Kushner's idiotic criminal bill on steroids. <laughs> I knew there'd be a Kushner or Ivanka hit in here. It's been like three weeks until you throw one out there, and I got to leave it there. I hope you have a great weekend, though. Thank you. We're you all out of time. It's always good to talk to Ann Coulter. Friday is at 4 every week. Count on it. It's 4.15 now, WMAL, traffic and weather. Every 10 minutes first on the five. Ed Rodriguez. I feel like she gets paid. Every time she makes a Jared Kushner reference, an angel gets its wings. It's one of those things. <laughs> Ed is in the Hadid Carpet Cleaning Traffic Center. Thank you, Clarence.